Welcome to another instructional video from OWL, the wise choice in fiber optic test equipment. I'm Professor Jim Powers. This video will demonstrate how to measure insertion loss on a single mode fiber optic link using a Zoom 2 optical power meter and a wave source series single mode light source. There are four main steps in the process of measuring insertion loss of any fiber optic link. These steps are gathering link information and accessories, checking the equipment and accessories for proper operation, setting an optical reference, also called zeroing, and then taking insertion loss measurements. Before beginning any fiber test, the user must gather the necessary link information and accessories required to complete the test. Link information is used to help determine how much loss is acceptable for the fiber under test, otherwise known as a link budget. Optical loss measurements are compared to the link budget to determine if the fiber is good or not, which is the same as saying pass or fail. There are five key parameters that apply to any fiber optic test. First is the fiber type, which will be either single mode or multi-mode. In the case of multi-mode, this could be either 62.5 or 50 micron. Next is fiber length. It is important to know how much fiber is in the link under test in order to determine how much loss is acceptable for that particular length of fiber. Some OWL testers can be used to measure the end-to-end -end length of the fiber automatically, including the fiber OWL 4 bolt optical power meter. Otherwise, the user can use jacket markings, installation documents, or other length measurement methods such as OTDR. For best results, avoid estimating the fiber length whenever possible. Third is number of connections. A connection is the point where two fiber connectors mate together, such as in a patch panel, wall plate, or mating sleeve. Fourth is the number of splices, which can be either fusion or mechanical. For the purpose of calculating a link budget, most cabling standards do not distinguish between fusion and mechanical splices. Lastly, the user must determine what wavelengths they will test at. For multi-mode, this is 850 and or 1300 nanometers, and for single mode, this is 1310 and or 1550 nanometers. When using a micro owl or fiber owl optical power meter, these parameters can be entered directly into the device to calculate the link budget. However, if the link budget needs to be calculated manually, this is done simply by adding together the fiber loss, connection loss, and splice loss. Fiber loss is given in dB per kilometer and varies based on the fiber type and wavelength. To calculate fiber loss, multiply the fiber length in kilometers by the fiber loss. Connection loss is the number of connections multiplied by the dB loss per connection. Splice loss is the number of splices multiplied by the dB loss per splice. Most users will follow the fiber, connection, and splice loss specified in cabling standards, such as the TIA-568. It is also helpful to determine the connector type used in the link under test, which will help determine the right reference cable configuration to use. For accessories, it is highly recommended to keep at least three patch cables on hand, since there are three reference methods, one jumper, two jumper, and three jumper. Mating sleeves may also be required for some link configurations. Refer to OWL's video on reference methods for more information. Finally, if testing multi-mode fiber, the launch cable attached to the light source will also need to be wrapped around a mandrel according to cabling standard specifications. Refer to OWL's video on mandrels for more information. Now that we've gathered the equipment and accessories that we're going to be using for this insertion loss test, it's important to check them over to make sure that they're, they're okay to use for, this, for the test. Now in this case, you, uh, we're using the Zoom 2 optical power meter and we're using a wave source, uh, a light source here. Um, since we're testing a single mode fiber today, uh, what we need to do is make sure that we indeed have a single mode port installed into our light source. Um, particularly with the wave source, this, uh, this light source comes in several different configurations. Uh, you could have multi-mode only on this side, uh, single mode only on this side. Uh, you could have a quad wavelength source where there's multi-mode and single mode, as is the case with this particular unit. Um, and you can also have a VFL installed, or you could have a VFL installed in either one of these ports as well. So it's important to look on the back of the unit, uh, uh, look at the serial number sticker, and, and check to see which wavelengths are indeed installed uh, 
in this light source. Now, the next thing we need to do is check our equipment and uh, make sure the patch cables are okay to use. To do this, we need to connect our first patch cable to the single mode port on the wave source, and then the other side will plug into the detector port on the power meter. Okay. Once we've done that, we can power the units on. Okay. Now, a little bit about the, uh, the display here uh, of the Zoom 2. You'll see that this word low appears. What this means is that there's no measurable amount of light coming into the detector. Uh, that's because we're not, we're not uh, set to a, uh, we're not connected to a, an active wavelength. Um, you see we have our measurement units over here in DBM. Uh, we have our wavelength and our battery status. Now, because we're testing single mode fiber, uh, 850 nanometers is not a single mode wavelength. So we need to, to set the 1310 nanometers for this test. So we press the wavelength button until it reads 1310 down here. And then we also switch to the single mode port on this light source. We do that by pressing the port button. Okay. Once, once, the, uh, once this port is active, you'll see that the indicator LED is lit a certain color. Uh, it'll, in this case, it's red, which means 1310. If it was green, it would be 1550. Now, as you can see, we, ha we now have a power reading here instead of the word low. We have a, a reading of minus 9.85, for example. Now, this is actually a good reading. Our target value is minus 10 dBm. Now, this could be a little higher or a little lower, but it should be fairly close. In this case, it's close, it's close enough. In fact, it's a little bit higher than minus 10. Uh, what we really want to make sure is that we're not exceeding minus 11 dBm. At that point, you may want to try cleaning off the, the, uh, the connectors a little bit. And if that doesn't work, you might want to re uh, consider replacing that patch cable. But for now, this particular patch cable is okay to use. So we're going to disconnect it from the testers. And then we're going to take this patch cable and set it aside. Uh, this patch cable will be used uh, to connect the zoom into the link we're going to be testing. But, we'll, but we don't need it anymore for a while, so we're going to set it aside. Then we take our second cable here, and we plug it in the same way. Okay, as you can see, we uh, again have a value of uh, above minus 10, which is it's still close and we're not uh, exceeding minus 11 dBm. So this particular patch cable is also okay to use. So we've, we've checked that our equipment's all working properly. Uh, now, once we're connected this way, we can actually zero out the, the wavelengths that we're using for our test. Uh, today, I'm gonna demonstrate a dual wavelength test, um, dual wavelength being 1310 and 1550 nanometers, which are the two wavelengths used for single mode. So since we're already set to 1310 on both sides, we can simply zero out the, uh, the zoom by pressing and holding this uh, zero button here. And as you can see, once I do that, um, you'll see a, a reading called or a reading of zero dB on the screen. Uh, setting a reference is this, and this is exactly the reason why setting a reference is called zeroing. It's when, when you set a reference, your meter will read zero dB. Um, so we can, we're zeroed at 1310 nanometers, but now we also need to zero at 1550. So we switch the wavelength on both sides. And we press the wavelength button to do that. Okay, now, once we have everything connected, everything set to 1550, we can zero out again. Okay, as you can see, we're still reading fairly, we're really close to zero. Uh, so now what we've done is checked our equipment, made sure our patch cables are okay, zeroed out our, our patch cables, um, and we can, we're now ready to take an insertion loss measurement. However, there's one thing I do want to cover before we continue, is once you've set your reference, you do not want to disconnect this cable from the light source port. Uh, disconnecting and reconnecting will... Uh, will change what the, what the power meter believes to be the reference and basically in, invalidates your test and you'll have to start over from scratch. So just remember not to disconnect this, this cable until you are completely done testing. Okay, now that we've zeroed out our equipment, um, 
we can take both units to opposite ends of the link that we're testing um, and then connect them into the link. Um, so we're going to take the light source with its cable. Remember not to disconnect this, this port here. We take that to one side of the fiber link. And then we take this patch cable that we set aside earlier and keep that with the, the power meter for its side of the link. Okay, and we can actually plug that, that cable into the detector port at this time. Now, what, uh, what we need to do is just use your imagination. Pretend that uh, the zoom is in one closet and the wave source is in another closet. That's typically what happens when you're testing a link like this. There's going to be um, the ends of the fibers are going to be in different locations. What I've done is I've taken a, a little box like, like this to simulate uh, the fact that there are patch panels on two different sides of the link. So for example, this closet will have a six port patch panel and then this side of the closet will also have a six port patch panel. Okay. And then I've got a little, little uh, coil of fiber in here that simulates this fiber link uh, to, to uh, give a fairly accurate loss reading. So once we've taken our units to opposite ends of the link, we can connect them into port number one on both sides here. Okay, now for, for simplicity's sake, um, uh, what I'd like to do is, is test at 13, 10 nanometers first. It, it keeps things more organized if we do it that way. So what I'm going to do is change the wavelength on both units again to 1310. Okay, now as you can see, we have a reading on the screen here, and this in this case we're having a loss reading of point, 0 0.4 or so. Um, this, okay, so this is actually uh, a reading that you would compare to a link budget that you may have um, created. Um, you want to make sure that, that the loss reading you see on the, on the display here does not exceed the loss budget of the of the link that you're testing. So let's just assume that we have a link budget of 3 dB for these links. Uh, in this case, uh, we're not even uh, you know, we're not even coming close to 3 dB. So this this particular fiber is working properly at 1310 nanometers. What we're going to do is we're going to store the rest of the fibers here at 1310 nanometers. Uh, we found that it is much easier. Um, and then this is just a helpful tip. It's it's much much easier to test all the fibers at one wavelength first, um, and then write down the values, uh, the the measurements, if you like. Um, and once you're done testing at one wavelength, then all you have to do is press the wavelength button once on each tester, and then you you go on and test the other wavelength. It's much easier that way. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, speed up the process here a little bit and test the rest of these fibers at 1310. And finally, we take a reading for uh, 1310 nanometers. Now, as you may have been able to see there, is that none of our, none of our readings exceeded 3 dB. So uh, what this means is that all of our fibers that we've installed um, and tested um, are, are good. They haven't uh, exceeded three, our 3 dB link budget. So we're, we can be assured that this link is working at 1310. Now what we're going to do is we're going to switch the wavelength on both units uh, to 1550 nanometers and then we're going to connect back in to port number one and start from from uh, port number one again and and they, and remember you can record these values as you go along if you like um, so we have a reading of minus 1.9 or so so let's uh, speed up the process here and test the rest of the fibers Okay, finally we, uh, we connect into fiber number six and we record this value if, you, if we like. But again, if, you've, if you looked um, and noticed, we did not exceed our 3 dB link budget. So what this means is that these fibers are working correctly at 1550 nanometers as well. So 
well, you can you can be assured that this link is installed correctly and has been uh, tested to prove that fact. This has been another instructional video from OWL, the wise choice in fiber optic test equipment. For more information about additional instructional videos or OWL fiber optic test equipment in general, please visit OWL's website at owl-inc.com. I'm Professor Jim Powers. Thanks for watching.